Yeah, we're back on the sports match zone. I can tell you for that uh, League Two playoff match in the EFL that we were watching earlier on, Crew Alexandra defeated uh, Doncaster by four to three on penalties. The game went into penalties, and it's Crew Alexandra that got through with a victory there um, in that League Two playoff. We're going to talk some cricket now on the sports match zone. The Indian Premier League will soon be down to the business end, and the performances are absolutely lighting up as teams bid for uh, the spots in the playoffs. On Friday, the Gujarat Titans hampered uh, CSK's playoff quest, defeating them by 35 runs. Centuries from Shubhmat Gill, 104, and Asai Sudarsan with 103 added to the recent trend of incredible performances from the last three matches, leading the Titans to 231 for three of their 20 overs. CSK were then restricted to 196 for eight, which is a big total itself for T20 cricket. Moit Sharma bagging three for 31. Daryl Mitchell, six to three. And Moin Ali with 56, the top scorers for the Super Kings. This is how the table shapes up now following that result. The Kolkata Knight Riders, top of the table on net run rates over the Rajasthan Royals. Of course, the Kolkata Knight Riders have uh, Andre Russell and Sunil Narayan in their setup. The Rajasthan Royals have Shimron Hetmar and Robman Powell, the West Indies T20 captain. Two points adrift of them, the Sunrisers Hyderabad, who played a whopping game in midweek. The Chennai Super Kings stuck in fourth spot at the moment. Their defeat earlier today um, hampering their chances of making the playoffs, even though they are occupying a playoff spot at the moment. But they would have been a lot more comfortable if they had gotten the victory today. Just outside the playoff spots, Delhi Capitals, Lucknow Super Giants and Royal Challengers. Bengalura. So pretty top tight going there. The top four teams, of course, qualify for the playoffs. Uh, the Gujarat Titans in eighth spot at the moment. Uh, they have 10 points, to six points off the lead. And I think mathematically they may still have a shot at going in because the all of the top eight teams that we're looking at at the moment are in playoff contention. Obviously, the Bengalura and Titan teams and even the Super Giants have a lot more difficulty getting into the top four because they are a bit off the pace. But mathematically, they do have a shot to, 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 to get in. Nikhil Uttam Chandani Jani, uh, joins us now to uh, put things in perspective. Uh, Nikhil, the IPL never fails to excite us. and <laughs> We've seen some cricket this week that are absolutely out of this world, even though that's the tagline for the T20 World Cup. But it's been brilliant, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, Lance, I think um, what we've seen in terms of the scores, uh, it's been high-level entertainment for fans around the world. Again, you have to sort of consider the difference in services that you get in India compared to when the, when the World Cup comes around to the Caribbean. They will be very different. Um, they will be a, probably a lot slower as we get deeper into the tournament. And I think runs are going to come a lot harder for those top order batters that are just smashing every every game and getting to those 250 scores. But what we saw today, I thought was a real technical performance by the Gujarat Titans. You mentioned it, they're still mathematically in with a chance and it's almost like vengeance. Think back to last year's IPL final. It went over three days, it was in Ahmedabad and it was against the CSK team and they didn't get over the line then. So this was good sort of revenge and who knows if they get into the playoffs and have a chance to win, we know how good they've been in knockout cricket. You never know, they could look back at this win as a pivotal moment in their season. Yeah, um, what are your thoughts about the matches that we had seen earlier on? Because was it the Sunrisers Hyderabad that put on a display um, on Wednesday? That was, I, I want to say awesome, but it was more than that. Well, 169 chased down in, inside of 10 overs. I couldn't really believe what we were witnessing, to be honest, Lance. What this uh, partnership has done, they call them Travis Shake because the destruction that they've caused, it's been so brutal that they've had to sort of come up with a nickname. Two left-handers, and again, I want to start by saying you don't often see two left-handers opening your batting in T20 cricket. But SRH, Daniel Vittori and co. have looked past that sort of matchup. They believe they've got two fearless guys at the top of the order who will take teams apart. And where they play their cricket in, in Hyderabad is on flat black soil pitches where the ball comes onto the bat. And Travis Head and Abhishek Sharma, as well as Klaassen and the others, have fully exploited that. So I think what they've done, and Pat Cummings has committed to this from the beginning of the season, they will look to just bash you out of the game. Now, it's high risk. When pressure's on, you get to Chennai in the final, which definitely could be on the slower side. You could have spin involved. Can Travis Head, Abhishek Sharma and Cole replicate this sort of performance? Time will tell, but they've committed to one way and they're sticking by it. Yeah, um, a couple of 
post-match comments have suggested to Nikhil that when they're on the slower pitches there in some of these IPL matches, which may be a little bit um, resembling the pitches that they, they would play in the Caribbean, um, batters are actually looking ahead to the T20 World Cup and shaping their, their batting application, even here in the IPL, to what may be demanded of them in the T20 World Cup? To be honest, Lance, I think you're spot on. Um, and I think teams will have to sort of look to that. It's always going to be at the back of their mind. And I looked to someone like a Travis Head. It was a couple of games ago, I think it was in Delhi. And it, it wasn't the easiest of surfaces. And it was a real telling knock for me to see him still get to 50 and still sort of find new ways to innovate and score. I mean, you look at the way he sort of improved his game. I even look at the way that the two openers went about it today. They put on 210 runs. And Ahmedabad is one of the bigger venues in India, and it was on a red soil pitch. So you saw the ball sort of holding up. You saw pace off deliveries being much tougher to hit. And while they think Chennai did a ball as well as they would have liked, they're missing Musa Fizuraman, they're missing Papirana. I still think I admire the way Gil and Sudarshan went about things because they found different ways to score, even against, I think, slower deliveries and against some decent bowling towards the back end by Chennai. Yeah, and as we're talking about the batting and, of course, the quality of the surfaces, Nikhil, at the top of the show, I spoke about this, and I'd love to get your take on the number of centuries that has been scored in this IPL, 101. It's a record. Yeah, Murray, what I would say is, obviously, not only the fact that they're getting to those milestones, what you're not seeing anymore, I think in the olden days, maybe three, four IPLs ago, you would see guys getting to 80, 90, and then sort of slowing down just to try and get to that big 100, unless your name is Chris Gill, of course. But what I think I've seen, I mean, you look at today, Sudarshan and Gill both got to it in 51 deliveries. It was just amazing. Gill, sorry, 50 deliveries. It was amazing to see that even though sort of they get to the 80s and 90s, which can be nervous for batters at times, it's just no holding back. And I think it shows you, one, the impact player. Teams know they have to sort of get 15 to 20 more runs. But also, that cricket is changing, which is why I think we're going to talk about Virat Kohli a bit, but it's why you see him sort of accelerating a lot more in the middle overs now. Guys are aware that cricket is going to another level and the batting must improve and sort of go with it if you want to be successful. Yeah, Virat Kohli, of course, the top run scorer in the IPL so far with 634 runs. It's just unfortunate that his team, they're not higher up the points table. Yeah, they're in, a, they're in with a big chance, Maria. Yes. What I'll say is I think we're seeing... A third edition, if that's possible, of Virat Kohli. After 17 seasons, 35 years old, all the cricket he's played, he still continues to add to his game. What he did against Punjab the other day, two days ago, against the spinners especially, he talked about bringing out the slog sweep. He talks about not worrying about getting out. But, I mean, this is a guy who has struggled against spin. You look at last season, five dismissals in 11 innings against spin. His strike rate was around 110. But what he's done this year, it's just gone to another level. Averages 40 and a striking at 190. So clearly he's done something mentally, physically in his game that sort of has transpired onto the field and it's allowed him even at this age with all of his quality and runs behind him still to want to keep improving and keep growing. It's amazing. Yeah, and his team, of course, as you said, still in with a chance. Uh, Lance and I, of course, outlined how close that points table is. I'd love, Nikhil, for you to share with us which teams you think will make it to the playoffs. It's a really good one, Maria. To be honest, I have picked Chennai before, but I think losing Mustafizor and Patirana is a massive loss. And the narrative with the final in Chennai is perfect for them, but I just can't see them beating. I think they have Rajasthan and RCB who are in red hot form in Bengaluru. So it's going to be really tough for them. Even if they get one win, it still might not be enough. I really love the way the Delhi Capitals are going. They're trending in the right direction. Fraser McGurk has been unstoppable. They've got Sheho, who I think has also evolved, speaking of improvement. But I'm going to pick Delhi Capitals and Lucknow Super Giants. I like the makeup of those two teams. I also like the variety in that Super Giants bowling lineup. I pick RCB to slightly miss out. I just think they're leaving too much to do at the back end of the tournament. Yeah, Lucknow Super Giants has one of our very own, Nicholas Puran. We're going to talk now about our Windies players and how they have been performing because we are in a big World Cup year, Nikhil. And of course, these performances are so important, especially the players that have been picked. So our producer has uh, prepared a graphic for us. So let's just take a quick look at how the Windies players have been doing. The batters first. Okay, so at the top of the, this graphic, we have Sunil Narayan. He, of course, has been leading where the runs are concerned for the West Indies players. Uh, 461 runs so far. His high score, 109. 
at an average of 41 with a strike rate of 183. Nicholas Puran, the next one on this batting chat. He will be suiting up for the World Cup, having played 12 matches, 363 runs. His high score, 64 not out at an average of 60, strike rate 162. Andre Russell also one that we'll be paying very, very close attention to. He has 198 runs, 64 not out, just like Puran. Average 33 and a strike rate of 186. Shea Hope, he has played in seven matches. His high score is 41. Average 19 with a strike rate of 161. Ravman Powell, the man that will be leading our Windies team, our very own skipper, has played in six matches. He has amassed 77 runs. His high score 27, so that average is 19. Shimron Hetmeyer, another name that we've been talking about a lot here on the Sports Max Zone. 10 matches, 83 runs, 27 not out, an average of 27, strike rate 184. Romario Shepard, he plays for the Mumbai Indians. He has played in five matches. He has an average of 28. Let's move quickly now to the bowlers before Nikhil comes in. Sunil Narayan, again, topping the bowling where our Windies players are concerned. No wonder there has been a lot of call for him to take part in this World Cup. He will not be suiting up for us 11 matches, uh, 14 runs at an average of 6.61. Andrew Russell, he has played in 11 matches, uh, high score. I think that should be wickets there, right? 13 wickets, not runs, viewers, sorry about that. 13 wickets so far and, of course, an average of 10.16. Alzari Joseph, he plays for the Gujarat Titans. He got three wickets so far. And Romario Shepard has five wickets so far. So, Nikhil, you can run the rule. You're in charge now. What do you make of how our Windies players have gone about their business? I'm very impressed, Maria. I think this has been one of the more successful IPLs from West Indian perspective. Nicholas Puran was at the top of that list, obviously, underneath Sunny on the Rhine. Right who I will not talk about anymore because he's not playing. Yes. Um, I think what Puran has achieved, and again, I think this is why he's actually quite underrated when it comes to, you hear this conversation about the best T20 players in the world, it's Suri Kumar Yadav, Heinrich Klassen. I insert Nicholas Puran right into that list. What he has done in this IPL has shown me a lot because the nature of where he's batted, the situations he's come into, he's averaging over 60, which means he's been unbeaten a lot. He's been sort of their main finisher, different role than what he plays for the West Indies but to be able to do that innings after innings a high risk approach and be that effective I think it deserves a huge amount of credit and I think is a testament to how generational of a talent he is when it comes to T20 cricket and it's, I think he's only now starting but coming down the list Andre Russell and his performances have been a huge huge relief for West Indian fans and for I think worldwide watchers because having seen him sort of back so well which we've seen over the years the biggest question coming into it was the bowling and when I look at the West Indies struggles we've discussed it a few times on the show it's the death bowling that's a big concern when you looked at his wickets just now I think more than half of those wickets come in the last five overs where the West Indies sort of struggle the most so just knowing that I think seeing how wicket taking he's been at the back end they've trusted him um Shreyas Ayer has trusted him with that role and the delivery and the execution of the wide Yorker has been something that really has stood out to me. So if he can continue in that vein, come the World Cup time, I think it's going to be a huge addition and boost for the West Indies. Obviously disappointing that Romario Shepard only played the five games. I think he only bowled one over at the back end, didn't bowl as much as he batted. And then Azari Joseph played the first three and then was, was dropped. But look, looking at Sheho, the way he sort of evolved his game batting at number three, he got 41 from 17. I remember years ago when they used to say, she hope wasn't capable of sort of accelerating. He batted too slow in the middle. Well, he's showing that like a Virat Kohli, like a Puran, like a Klassen, he can also evolve and accelerate with the game. And look, West Indies, it's an exciting time to be West Indies fan, man. I think we've got a lot of different options. And the fact that they're performing at the IPL, where you've got the best players in the world, it's a great prospect for us to go into the T20 World Cup. And look, I'll remind viewers, I'm seeing a lot of talk about who will win this World Cup in the last couple of weeks since the squads have come out. People forget that the West Indies have beaten South Africa, they've beaten India at home, England at home, and they won one game against Australia in a three-match series earlier this year. So I think they've got as good a chance of anyone, and these IPL numbers tell us why. 
Mm. Yeah, okay, uh, Nicky, we're, go we're, we're going to leave it there. Um, uh, the Harrison College past students have played a starring role on the Sports Mat Zone this week because you're on today. Haley Matthews was on a couple of days ago, so let's see if um, you can make an appearance next week again for the Harrison Harrison best College. School, Lance, that is the best school in the Caribbean. I oi, 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 in is. the Caribbean, so. How, how did, best how, secondary school in the Caribbean. How, um, what, no, no, what, no. What, what, what research has told you that? Um, I think just when you look at variety, you talk about variety of bowling attacks, we have variety of students. We've got Haley Matthews cricketer, a few commentators in there, a few scholars, prime ministers. We've got it all, man. Come Nikhil, around, Nikhil, you're out of course. time. Time off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nikhil, we'll, right, we'll talk again soon. All right, we'll, we'll be back with more he of the sport. He didn't even say Barbados. He said the Caribbean. What about us? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>